Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Neil Talk Live. And today we're sitting at the demo table again, Jessica, because yeah. you're going to show us how to work with aqua colors. Aqua colors, amazing aqua colors. Yeah, it was uh, something that people were asking about last week in the yeah. Dutch version mm -hmm. of the show, or we spoke about it. And aqua colors are kind of an inked. And you can use that to create marvelous effects with and to create just amazing uh, designs. But you, there are certain ways of using it. Yeah, yeah. you can play. For instance, I like to work with uh, prep and wipe, but you can play with finishing wipe or even acetone. Yeah. You can, well, I work on uh, the extreme matte top gel mm -hmm. as a background. Uh, on that, I work with my aqua colors, yeah. but the Extrema doesn't have a sticky layer. But if you remove with finishing wipe, your aqua colors will go mo more floating, more it, it like a marble more. design. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, already a lot of information, yeah. and we just got started. So first, let's check out what these aqua colors are. So Jessica is already opening her bottles of aqua colors, and you have to be careful when you do that because it's really pigmented. So be careful not to spill it. No. Because I know a guy, he was working here in the warehouse, and he was taking samples of these aqua colors, and he got it on his hand, and it lasted almost for two weeks. Yeah. Permanent, semi-permanent tattoo yeah. without pay. Another way of <laughs> using aqua colors. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know me, I really love to spill, so I'm really careful with this. Um, you can work from the bottle, yeah. or you can work on your paper pellet as well. Yeah. Then you think, well, it dries out. Well, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It looks dry, but if you take your prep and wipe and your uh, brush and go a little bit uh, through the drop, then it, you will get the it color. It wetens it. It wake, uh, wakes it up. Yeah. As some yeah. of our trainers uh, yeah. say. And you can mix all the colors together. That yeah. is cool as well. And you can do so a lot of things with them. You can play uh, in the background with the aqua colors. Yeah. You can color in stamps with aqua colors. You can go over foil or chameleon flakes or, well, think of it. It is really a cool, amazing uh, design then. It's a transparent product yes. by nature. Yes. So you get a can get a see-through effect, mm -hmm. um, but you can also uh, get it more opaque, more covering. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, I like to work on white because white, yeah. the colors will be perfect like they Pop are. Up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you work on nude, for instance, it's beautiful as well, but the colors will be more soft then. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. let's... Uh, so, what do you have prepared here? The tip is done with white as white gel polish. Yeah, white as white gel polish, and then the Extrema top gel over it. Mm -hmm. And now, now I'm going to show you the difference, uh, how it is without removing the sticky layer, which the, the Colourpop doesn't have. Yeah. Thank you. You have more control over your product. So. Like this. So let's take a little bit of pink. That's almost like instant marbling, huh? Yeah. And take a little bit of yellow. yellow. So it stays yeah. over here. Now I take my detailer three and a little bit of prep and wipe. And prep and wipe is a product that you can use to prep the natural nails with to remove the sticky layer of gel or gel polish. So it's a multi-usage product and also to play around with your aqua colors. Mm -hmm. And now just go into your aqua colors. I really love to make well different sh uh, drops of inks. Later on I'm showing you a design. Mm -hmm. So this is just to let you see how it works. 
And do you use a lot of uh, prep and wipe or just a little bit? Just a little bit. If you do too much, mm -hmm. your drop will go really flowing. Flowing. And I now just want little kind of drops. It becomes like a cloud. Yeah. You can even do aquarelle flowers with the aqua colors. Yeah, I think that is uh, quite easy to get the yeah. aquarelle effect with using aqua colors because it's already semi-transparent. Tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now take a nail wipe. So that was the non-cleansed surface, yes. the first one. And now you have the same color pop. Yes. And you remove the not there <laughs> sticky layer. No, but I'm making it more smooth like mm -hmm. this. So again. Same colors. Same colors. Look what happens. Yeah, oh, it bleeds far more. So now you can add just tiny dots wherever you want. And think of this as a background for a beautiful plasti gel flower or, well, it's really amazing. Or do go over with this with a stamp. See how it runs? Yeah. Cool, huh? It pushes, uh, it pushes the other product away a little bit, like, yeah. So cool. marble designs you can do with this as well. It's really cool because you just add a, l a t well, you need, uh, you need a different brush. For that, I maybe would use the Detailer One. Yeah. And just add stripes. And because of the background is more smooth, it will run. It will flow really cool. That's really okay. amazing. Yeah. So this is the Just easy. basic, simple yeah. level of working with the aqua colors, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to prepare the next technique with using aqua colors, and uh, while we're checking out a video made by Julia Koncharova. So Julia is preparing the base. This is a green gel polish, willow green, and she's adding a little bit of gold foil. My favorite. And then she's adding a second coat of the willow green and just blending this with the ombre brush over the gold foil and adding some chameleon flakes. We love the chameleon flakes, oh no, don't we? Those are my favorite. Yeah. yeah, mine as well. Oh. And then another layer of willow green just to get like a foggy, misty, whimsical nail. And this is UV gel, but from the jar, so it's a little bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah. And that perfect for the wet in wet perfect, technique yeah. that she's now doing using gel polish whitest white. So not liner gel because that won't run as much, but whitest white. She's adding a tiny bit of concentrate and the base color of the willow green to create uh, the shadow color. That's shadow so color amazing. always needs to have a little bit of the base color in it. Yeah, huh? yeah. And this gives definition to the flowers. As you can see, she goes around the flower petals and now adding a second coat of flower petals over That's the first cool. ones. You get really depth like this. Yeah, huh? beautiful effect. I really like how she's working and she's really into flowers at the moment. She has a face, <laughs> a beautiful, cool face. Oh, that's amazing. So now a little bit of liner gel, black. Yeah. Again, to deepen everything, to outline everything. That's it a cool really, effect. it has a lot of depth. Huh? Yeah. It's Beautiful. It's almost 3D. And extreme matte. Wow. Of course, liner gel white to highlight the flower petal edges. Little dots keys in the center. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Super cool. Amazing. Oh, and the variations are also beautiful. Eh? I like the middle one also. Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, so be sure to follow Julia Koncharova on Instagram or, of course, on Facebook. She's one of our international trainers and she makes a lot of video content yeah. for you to get inspired. Yeah, she even has a Facebook uh, a group. Yeah, she, she made a group. Yeah, 
Yeah, and you can follow her over there because she's really uh, enthusiastic and uh, posts a lot of uh, movies, videos. She's yeah. even so enthusiastic that she's learning how to speak English yeah, in does. order for her to be a more active part in our team of trainers. <laughs> That's a sweetheart. So the next one. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, so I've prepared Widest White Gel Polish again, but now uh, in the sticky layer of the wi Widest White Gel Polish, I added a little bit of Chameleon Flakes. Um, we have, well, we have a lot of chameleon flakes, but yeah. I've used um, the gold. The golden chameleon flakes. Yeah, so I'm, I believe it's 54. 54. I believe. Yeah, yeah. The shiny ones. Mm. And then the extreme uh, top gel over it, and this is the background. So, and because of the foil, the flakes underneath, yeah. you get a really amazing, amazing design. Let me think. So now you're using really the brush from the bottle and just adding it on there. Yeah. And careful. And careful, <laughs> yes. Maybe over here. Let's think maybe a little bit of It yellow. all p comes by your creativity, eh? these color combinations and... Yeah, well, I've used the uh, chameleon flakes with the gold, with the blue and green mm -hmm. in the background. So that's why I use the cold colors yeah. on top. That is really cool. If you use the uh, number 55, yeah. those have the uh, pink and um, well, uh, warm colors. Yeah. I would use the pink and the purple and yeah. Okay, so, so. try to, c to, to make it um, um, a combination that works. It's, it's more poppy like that. Yeah. So, now, again, with my Detailer 3, and just shaping. Are you opening up the, the, the aqua colors? Yes. So that becomes more see-through, am I correct yes. in saying yes. that? Yes, yes, yes. And you can make all different kinds of shapes underneath. You can even do kind of like a Baroque background. Yeah. It's really cool. And you can even add later on mm -hmm. color. And what do you mean with that? Well, add if you think, well, over here I need a little bit of more blue. Oh, it's yeah. It's okay, you can add. Or a different color. If you think, well, maybe let's do crazy and take something purple or something, you can add. It's not a problem. So, I'm adding a little bit of blue. Over there. And it evaporates, yes? so it dries by air? Yes, it dries by air, but you uh, let it dry mm -hmm. really good before you go over with a top gel. And how long do you think you will need to let it dry? Three hours, no. <laughs> 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 no, not that long. But you can see, if you can see on camera, do you see this, this line? Yeah. This is not r really dry yet. Okay. So if it's more um, matte, yeah. then it's good. And um, if I cover my, uh, my design, I always cover it first with the base and top. Always, yeah. and then a top gel of choice. But if you do it with the extreme mud over yeah. here, all your colors will run. Okay. That's really, well, the first time when we had the extreme mud top mm -hmm. gel for the first time. Oh, it's amazing and it's really cool. And, and I go over it and oh, the aqua colors were gone. This is really, really sad. So, but so then the again. Colors, uh, am I right to say that the colors bleed out? Yeah, yeah. Bleach out. Yeah, they bleach out. So base and top over um, my design, and then if you want to do it extreme mud, then go over with the extreme mud and do it with a floating motion movement. Yeah. Not really use uh, the brush because it tends to run with the brush then. Okay. Yeah. Well, those are helpful hints, I have to say, because I would have just taken extreme mud over it and then would have been very sad that my design is yeah, gone. Yeah, like me, like me. So what are you doing? So I'm just uh, adding, well, moving a little bit of these lines mm -hmm. because I really want to center bright. Yeah. And, well, and now I'm going to cap it 
with my uh, basin top. Ja. And now you see. And then of course you see this uh, shine of the chameleon flakes coming through. Yeah, that's really cool. And I will show you. Oh yeah, I see you take a relative big amount of uh, basin top. Yes. Softly movements. Yes, you're almost caressing the nail. I always caress my designs <laughs> because they're my babies. That's cool, huh? Super so cool. Into the lights, and then I can show you. Oh, you prepared some variations. Yes. So these are the same, but then with um, well a black outline. A black outline with liner gel. The roses are also beautiful, I have to say. The roses, yeah, th this is really cool. It's a little bit more work, but I use, uh, to make the rose, acetone. Acetone? Yes. Because? Well, acetone, uh, a finishing wipe is really soft and you will have the, the color more. Mm -hmm. If you use prep and wipe, I like to use prep and wipe because I want to have the background come more. Yeah. If you use uh, acetone, you will get even more acetone, of more background uh, mm -hmm. going up and all of the colors going out. And if I want to make uh, roses, yeah. I really want more color on the side of my yeah. roses, on the, on the petals. Yeah, so this is what I've done with uh, acetone. Yeah. Okay, so that is really something that you have to practice and learn. Yeah, so these are really the same as I did uh, just right now. I really love it with different colors. And over here, the same, but then adding uh, master paints. Just to yeah. uh, follow all of the lines and the circles you did. And even in this one, it has chameleon flakes. So I really mm. love these designs. Super cool. Yeah. Well, I think we are ready for something else that is really cool. And that is Natalia Klitsenka, and she's going to show us how to create a see-through nail with through-the-looking-glass gel polishes, blue, and she uses stamping plates. Let's really check cool. this out. So, Natalia is going to use a lot of different things, but mostly the glass blue. And she's first creating the nail using Power Gel Clear, which is a really hybrid between gel and acrylic. And she's using gel polish bond as a bond adhesive layer. First applying the Power Gel Clear onto the natural nail plate, before pulling it over through and over uh, the form to create the shape, sculpt the shape. Using a gel brush, she's first making contact to the natural nail, so she, she's really pressing it in there and then later on she's going to pull it out, creating the extension edge. This first airtight seal is very important. For the body of the nail, you can use any type of brush that you would like to use for the sculpting part. Knowing that Tyler is going to use an acrylic brush, yeah, an old the acrylic <laughs> brush, this is a number 10, and um, this acrylic brush it's easier to work with because it's softer. Yeah, yeah. So you can really pull and... and yeah, and, and it really works, it. yeah. The shape is going to be an almond shape. And if you work with power gel, you also work with prep and wipe, as you did earlier. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of prep and wipe within yeah. the magnetic company. love prep and wipe. But don't use too much prep and wipe. Really be... Um, use it sparingly. Yeah. And you use it to um, ensure that the product will not stick to your brush. And that is the only why, only reason why you use it. Yeah. yeah. Because and if you use too much, then it drenches the nail, becomes too wet with all things there. Of course, the building of the apex, mm -hmm. because the first layer was just to create the shape of the nail and the adhesion to the natural nail. And now a second bead of uh, power gel. I always find it difficult to get the correct amount of power gel, because I'm used to working with acrylic yeah. from the past and acrylic sh shrink between 10 to 20% during the working, uh, while you're working with acrylic. Yeah. And I'm so used to that, that uh, I had to get used to the fact that power gel doesn't shrink when you're working yeah. with it. In the beginning, I, I've used a lot of uh, power gel. Yeah, yeah well, in the of beginning that. of my career, I used a lot of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Taking prep and wipe and just sculpting everything into place. She's actually working now on the um, Easy Trainer, 
which is uh, great to use when you're at home and you want to work on and you want to play around and if you want to um, feel products, sculpting the products. Natalia is our trainer. She's also from the Ukraine. She's actually our ambassador, as we call it, within uh, Magnetic. And that means that she's responsible for the Russian-speaking countries and also for she's my right hand in developing trainings. And now she's using a very special tool, <laughs> the expert tool, the pinching tool for experts. You really have to be an expert before you use this. And be careful not to over-pinch it. No, no. And using the transparent mm. gel clamp just to fixate the C-curve and um, let it cure in the desired shape while it's in the twin light. Using a little bit of filing movements. And she's with this nail, she's actually only used the 340 grit buffer before applying the blue gel polish color. And this is the cyan glass, the cyan blue, so mm -hmm. the lighter blue. I love these glass gel polishes. Uh. Um, really, really, my newfound love. Yeah, I even have them at home, so and I just play around with them. Yeah, the effect is great as this, yeah. as a see-through glass nail. Yeah, but we are using it a lot. While I was filming this week, most of the trainers that were here were using the glass gel <laughs> polishes. <laughs> I can understand that. They are really amazing to work with. Beautiful shine. Already. At okay. the cuticle area, oh. Natalia is going to use purple with a sparkle, which is a transparent glitter, but with a kind of, it's almost like the chameleon flake, yeah, but that's then in cool. a purple version. And just slowly or, or softly putting this over the cyan glass to give it a shimmer. And you can use it on any color. It gives a different effect on any color. Oh, that's amazing. Of course, your favorite stamping plates. Yeah. Butterfly. Wow. And she's just putting that on that nail bed. With the sparkle. Here she's missing something. I think she go over that. And now with a different. Yeah. With elements. Flowers. From the ornaments. Cool. So. Supreme. Finishing everything with Supreme Finish, which is a tech free top gel, but it's very flexible. You can even use a Supreme Finish on your natural yeah, nails. Natural nails yeah. That's how we tested it by putting it on the natural nails of Yap. And then three weeks later, it was still there and still high shiny. Perfect. The cool thing with Supreme Finish is that it evens out also the surface. Yeah, it does. And here we have a beautiful silver butterfly. That is cool. Yeah, Natalia really is driven by technique, technical insight, and she creates them th th really different types of nails. I was working together with Gillian and he made a she made a glass nail and he was like overwhelmed by beauty. As with this nail, beautiful, thin. Yeah, just amazing. Of course, make sure that you are also following Natalia Gritsenka uh, on Facebook, but also on Instagram. She's very active and she makes a lot of videos and makes beautiful photos. She discovered Photoshop recently. And she's also my right hand when we work for the educational materials like videos and demos, etc. And we love Natalia. Yeah, we love Natalia. And as I said, we love through the looking glass gel <gasps> polishes. Yeah. And we have several colors of them. Gillian made a nice commercial. Let's check them out.
Well, those glass gel polishes, through the looking glass gel polishes, you can use them to layer designs. You can even build a nail with it because it's quite strong. Mm -hmm. You can use it over glitters, over pigments, over chrome, over other colors to create effects. And you're also going to use them at the end of the show because yes. you have a very cool technique. But before that, first aqua colors, let's fly back as a butterfly to what you are <laughs> holding in your hand. Yeah, Natalia, I feel a bond because I'm doing a a butterfly as well. So I have taken some of the FX foil yeah. and I've cut it into butterfly wings, as you see, over uh, the extreme up top gel. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the beginning of my design. And I am now adding with my brush yeah. color. On the butterfly wing. On I my guess. butterfly wing, yeah. And maybe a little bit here, wipe off, just really careful, I'm so afraid, ah well, gives color if it spills, <laughs> I love color, so now you took the deep purple, so the dark color, the purple, and just play around, of course, you have to be careful, I think, when you're using aqua colors, that you don't mix complementary colors together. Mm -hmm. Green and red, for instance. We don't have a, a red, but that will turn brown. Yes, it does. So always make sure that there's a buffer in between of the color. So go from a um, yellow or red, yellow, green, for instance. Yes, yes, yes. So, and now just filling up my FX foil. Yeah. Oh, well, this is... Uh, easy. Yeah. I think the most complicated part of this design until now is cutting and applying the FX foil. Uh, yes. It's self-adhesive, but it's very thin, and if you cut it, there's a plastic backing, and to get it off of the plastic backing, you really need to use a pointed or a slanted uh, tweezer to get it off the plastic backing, mm -hmm. because the foil itself is paper thin, but the backing is quite thick. Actually, when I first tested that product together with May, we thought, what the, what the, uh, mm -hmm. this is way too thick to use it on the nail. And then we discovered that it was self-adhesive. <laughs> so sometimes you have to work around with your products. So let's see what you're doing. You added now a little bit of? A little bit of purple. Yeah. And now I am, because we have black as well. Yeah. Do you use the black aqua colors a lot? No, not a lot, but... Um, if you put a little bit of black next to color, your color will pop more. Oh. And I need some shade over here because the body of the butterfly is there. And I'm just doing tap, 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 tap movements. Yeah, most nail art and designs, art in general is of course a balance between light and dark, creating contrasts, harmony. And we also need uh, always need a little bit of shadows to highlight other parts. Yes. So, just making some hmm. spots. Yeah, it's a spotted butterfly. A spotted butterfly. But later on, well now, I am just adding a liner gel to my design. Liner gel black. Liner gel black to go over my butterfly wing. And do you first seal it with uh, with a top gel, or are you using the liner gel black straight on top of this? Um, just to protect my aqua colors, yeah. I am sealing it mm -hmm. with my base and top. Uh, liner gel is more um, well. I like to work on the extreme mud top gel with liner gel because well, you have more. Well, how grip. You grip, yeah. yeah. But for now, I will just go over with the base and top because otherwise. And it takes let's see, because long. then probably you see it already popping out when you use the base and top. Yes. So again, soft movements. It's really like an. an uh, a chrome effect like this, but then in color. Yeah. Really cool, cool even huh? like that. Okay. 
Okay, this has to cure. You have to prepare your liner gel, of course. So while you're doing that, we're going to check out a video made by Katerina Konchar, also Ooh. from the Ukraine, our international trainer, famous for her beautiful flowers and one-stroke techniques. So let's see what she's doing. So the background is made using air nails, and air nails, of course, the airbrush system uh, by Magnetic, developed by Marine Pialka and Svetlana Andreeva. And Katerina is going to use the one-stroke technique, which is actually a technique where you have two colors of paint on your brush. In this case, she's using liner gel white together with blue concentrate to create the outline of the flower. And the thing with one-stroke is that you have to work with a flat brush and every movement that you do, you do simultaneously with two colors. Always make sure that the lighter color is on the outside of the flower and the darker color is on the inside of the flower and that automatically gives a lot of dimension. As you can clearly see, the type of movement that Katerina is doing with the brush also influences the petal in the end. So you can use it in a flat mov movement or a soft movement. You can even shake your brush a little bit to create more depth and more lines in your flower petal. And you can use your brush in a rounded motion to create round flower petals. So the one stroke is really an, a skill in itself. It's almost an art form. It's one of the techniques that I found very difficult when I started working with one yes. stroke because I'm used to working with a pointed brush mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden I had to use a flat brush. Yeah. And as you can see now, she's adding a second coat of color to give more depth, more vibrancy to the color. That's already beautiful. Yeah, it's, it, I, I was never able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this was already a bridge too far for me. <laughs> uh, what is very important is that you check how you uh, load your brush every time so that you go, you take white and the other color on your brush and you go over your palette, as you can see there, just smoothing everything and to get it in the hair of your brush. And if you do this carefully, then the brush stays clean and you can continue working. I had a tendency to switch sides all the time. So then my light side got in my dark side and of course that is not what we want. Creating small little leaves to the flower design we have special flowers for this. We have, the, of course, the one-stroke detailers and we have the flower brush set, both containing three brushes in different sizes mm -hmm. and uh, flat or angled. And now she's just pulling little stems to the flowers and using, of course, this is Katerina's choice, her own brush, as yeah. you have, of course, Jessica's choice. Yes, and you have the Pan's choice. So we love our brushes. Yeah, but all the three brushes are perfect. Yeah, they're great. Eh? Yeah, Katarina is gel. a. Yeah, yeah. I only use it with gel. Uh, Katarina is a, a smaller brush, a, a shorter brush. Yeah. Mine is a little bit longer, and yours is really long for long lines. It's perfect. Oh, and she added some highlights to the stems, and of course she worked in the same diagonal movement as she did with air nails. And now she's finishing everything with extreme mud. So this is how it looks like shiny. And then, da 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 da, that's the design. Also, Rina on Instagram, and make sure that you check out what she's making because she's doing a lot of different nails and a lot of different nail art. Also, check out Facebook and Instagram if you want to see the end result matte finished. Perfect. Let's continue. Yes, my butterfly. So I had time, so I've uh, gone over my base and top with my extreme mud because I really love to work on the extreme mud with my liner gel. So I am taking my brush. Yes. And now I'm um, well making outlines for my butterfly. So you're just first outlining the whole wing. Yes. And then later on making the uh, the details inside the wing of mm -hmm. the butterfly. You can make the veins, the nerves of the the butterfly wings with your liner gel or with Shirisa Sweeties, for instance, that's cool mm -hmm. as well. You can stay on top and your lines will be shiny and your background, your butterfly is matte. Uh, I think that's cool as well. You can do this with master paint if you want. It's all up to you. So now I am all over my um, butterfly wing. 
and now add just tiny lines. Yeah. I'm just listening to the director of the show because at the end we are just going to do a little recap of all of the designs and how you did them. Just to make sure everything is clear and just to make sure everybody remembers when to do what. Mm -hmm. Can you go a little bit more centered, please? Thank you. Of course. Sorry. No problem. That's why you have me here. Yeah. What would I do without you? A butterfly wing is actually an abstract type of nail art. If you don't add the butterfly itself to it, eh? if you don't add the body, then you can use it in an abstracted form. Mm -hmm. And then it actually, bec uh, the wing itself is the art form. Tiny little lines. Yeah, they need to be really tiny. Yeah. You just have to find your center. Yes. Sorry. Then we can see the lower half as well. What I really like about these brushes that you're using, of course, we also already mentioned Katerina's choice, Jessica's choice, or Pepin's uh, choice, mm -hmm. is that you really get a pointed, um, a very sharp point, very sharp tip to the brush. Yes. And when you work with lining gel, you're really able to either create a little drop and then pull it, or really work like, like a needle with it to create tiny, thin, thin, thinner than thin lines. I really love it. Um, when we didn't have these brushes, mm -hmm. I found it really difficult to make uh, uh, curls. Yeah. Because, um, th well, this brush uh, f uh, goes with your movement. It floats with your movement. Even though it's synthetic hair. Yeah. Because normally that is not a... S uh, a f following your mo motions is more something that you get with real hair. Yeah. And synthetic hair is more uh, harsh. Mm -hmm. But with these, it, it's just a miracle brush. It is. Now I can make curls. I'm so happy. And now you're making the eyes in the butterfly wing, as it were. Yeah. Little dots. And you can add some stress, uh, white liner uh, gel, of course. The highlighting. Yeah. Well, I would even think perhaps highlighting with white acrylic powder to give it a little bit more of a, a dimension depth. Ooh, yeah. That would be great, yeah. Very cool. And use different colors, use different backgrounds. Yeah. I've, uh, ha I have one with a blue background. Yeah. I can show you later on. With a uh, strass. So that is cool. Yeah. Like this. And then over here. Very cool. The black, of course, is, is really making it pop out. Yeah, black is my happy color. Yeah, I know it's your happy color. So this needs to cure. And while that will cure, we are going to check out another design, also made with black, and it's called Black Black Mamba. It was a special request from you. And we asked Julia Vorobieva to show us how she made the Black Mamba design. Perfect. So, Julia Vorobieva first makes a background and she's using Lady in Red gel polish for this. And the Lady in Red gel polish has a metal shimmer to it. And that really gives a nice shine. And this is the top gel from the jar, the same top gel Julia Goncharova was using. She's applying this and this will also be a wet in wet technique using black as black gel polish. Again, use gel polish, not liner gel, because gel polish will bleed out more and more easy while liner gel will stay in its place more. Using the wet and wet technique with this top gel ensures that the black drops will not touch each other. And that gives it the snake skin, reptile skin, crocodile skin effect. Use different amounts of black just to create more visual balance in the design. 
filling in the parts that are too open. And while this is curing, she's adding top gel from the jar to a black color pop and using the lady in red to do the same wet in wet technique, but now on black. So that we have both ends of the spectrum. Do you use the wet in wet technique a lot? Yes, yeah, I yeah, I do, with different uh, products. Okay, for different effects also. Yeah, it's really cool. Some brands, of course, have special blossom gels or uh, gels for this, but we discovered using the normal top gel, our old and very firm top gel, is working just as well, if not easier. Now, she's removing the sticky layer, and here we have the matte effect. And adding that, and she's taking some liner gel white. And of course, with the red glass gel polish and top gel. She's applying the extreme mud around the cuticle to create like a table, a flat surface on where she can paint her design. And she's painting her design using liner gel white. This is a design similar to the design that she showed us yesterday, but it also proves the fact that you can create girly designs on really with a, also with a very um, with tongue in cheek it's quite a combination of strong and feminine that's what I wanted to say creating a shadow color she's now shadowing this design and shadowing the flower petals and the shadow is of course is necessary for the definition the design the shadow color by the way was created using the glass gel polish these flower petals really go a little bit to the background when you do this, and she's doing the same thing with the other, the yeah, complementary design. Julia works a lot with the detailer number three. As you can see, everybody has its own personal favorite brush. And she's working now with the soft, tiny movements to create the definition to the ends of the flower petals. I always wonder how she's able to get such tiny applications using that brush. Yeah. Because I tried it home and I found it very difficult. I prefer Me to too. take a small brush <laughs> to do that. <laughs> the detailer one or two, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is your favorite for the small elements uh, from the detailer set? One or two? Uh, well, for these designs, the two. Yeah, yeah. For me as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the difference is tiny. Yeah, but there is yeah. difference. Yeah. So, this is again the, uh, the peony type flower. Beautiful flower. That's one of her trademark flowers. Yeah, yeah. I always had difficulty with creating this specific flower until I saw how she's, she's doing it, Julia Vorbieva, and it kind of worked. I was able to create it as well. Not as beautiful as this, unfortunately, but everybody has its own talent, of course. <laughs> The good thing with the liner gel is that if you press and use your brush correctly, you will really get the, the, the drawing, the markations inside the petals. And it gives it really a lot of uh, depth. Again, using the shadow around the flower to separate this layer of flower petals from the first layer or the, or the next layer of flower petals. As you can see on the palette of uh, Julia, she's using the product very sparingly. So not using a lot of the product. And that is also something I really admire, that she really uses and utilizes her product to the best. So no waste of product. And that is also something that I learned from her when I was working with her together in the studio, uh, because I had a tendency to take too much product on my palette every time. And of course, that's yeah, a waste of your product. Oh, it's just amazing. Even this is she's doing with this Detailer 3. Even that. And that closes the design Perfect. of the heart of the design. Just a nice petal here, or leaf. That's, I can, I just love to look at this and just relax and here we have the two designs oh, so beautiful. the black on red and red on black a little bit of chameleon flake 
also your favorite, but it's also her favorite. Of course, it's difficult for people when they don't have a professional studio to make sure that the focus stays correct. But nevertheless, we are very happy that Julia wanted to make this and also make other videos for us. Yeah, it's beautiful, huh? Yeah, perfect. I really love the, all the red background and the soft flowers on top. Make sure to follow Julia Vorobieva as well on Facebook or on Instagram to get more inspiration. And these four great trainers will give us more and more videos to use in both Neil Talk Live, the English version and the Dutch version, of course. So what is your end result? My butterfly, yeah. I've added some uh, white liner gel as well. And I've taken this one because of, look how it looks with strass as the back, yeah. as the body of the, the butterfly. So this is the end result of the butterfly. Yeah, beautiful. I really love that FX foil. Yeah. Or um, the shattered glass or the foil or and yeah. go over that with, uh, with the aqua colors. Can you show the different designs that you made up till now? Because you're going to do one more, but that will be a different technique. A different technique. So just explain once more what we are seeing. So this one. Was the first one. Was the first one. So just the extreme mud top gel and go over with your color and you will have more control of your uh, products. Over here with uh, finishing wipe or prep and wipe over the extreme mud top gel and your color will float more. So Some after more. cleaning the sur yeah. surface. Yeah. So over here, uh, chameleon flakes on the sticky layer of my whitest white gel polish, extreme mud top gel and over that going over with your colors. And but this also cleansing the surface. No. So with this one, not cleansing the no, surface? No, with no, okay. No, no. But if you do, then your It'll color will run more. Yeah. yeah, that's cool as well. So I have uh, a whole lot of different um, designs with aqua colors because you can color in stamps as well. This is colored in with aqua colors. Yeah. I think it's... Yes, beautiful. Or again, a butterfly with aqua colors. Or... Yeah, that's amazing. The flowers with <laughs> aqua colors and flakes underneath. And oh yeah, this, this is one. also something very cool. Yeah, this is with uh, well over here. This is white gel polish, and this mm. is black gel polish. Yeah. And because you go over with the colors, uh, aqua colors, you will see them only on your white background. Okay. So yeah, that's it's really very smart. Cool as well. I love this because you can you can you can make oh. everything with aqua colors. Yeah. The lizard side. This one yeah, well. that's the is colors. that also aqua color? Yeah, all the colors are aqua colors and the black is master paint. Okay. Yeah. So what will you show us now? Because I saw this on Facebook. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, what is that? What, what is, is that? that? Well it's it's really amazing and really fast. <laughs> I really love this technique. So the wet in wet we uh, we saw. Uh, yeah. yeah, Julia did the wet in wet. Um, and Julia did the wet and wet, yep. and <laughs> really, really cool technique. Um, I'm using the wet and wet with the glass uh, polishes. they yeah. looking through the glass. I'm making now um, an ombre with colors, yeah. and uh, and then do something magical. Okay, show okay. me because <laughs> I want to see how the, how this works. So and it's so fast. I understood. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, over here. So here I am. Yeah. I'm taking three colors. Yeah, the pink glass, red glass, and blue glass. Uh, yellow glass, <laughs> <laughs> blue glass. So an ombre going, starting with my darker color. Mm -hmm. So this tip is already, uh, well, what color? White, not white. They're uh, natural. Natural. It's a natural tip. If you do just one layer of whitest white gel polish, yeah. and then do this, you will get the same uh, end result. Okay. And how do you get the fading, the ombre, with an ombre tool or? Yeah, I use two brushes. You can do it just with your ombre tool. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to use uh, Pepin's Choice. Oh, okay. And just 
hole? Pull it through. Wipe off. Just to make a connection between the colors. Mm -hmm. And now I'm using my ombre tool. Okay. And it doesn't have to be really perfect because we are going to add drops of something. This is uh, the most perk of the whole design. Yeah, well, I think the ombre technique is a quite a difficult technique using gel polishes. In my time, we did the same ombre. We called it fading, and we did it with paint or with acrylics. Acrylics, yeah. And that's really easy. It is. So, turning over uh, my tip. Just go backwards. Happy colors, nice for the nice weather. Yeah, summer is coming. Like this. Mm -hmm. I have some prep and wipe, yeah. or finishing wipe, and just go. How you say it? Pricken. Are you just <laughs> puncturing, puncturing the surface? Yeah, just a tip. For a more even blend? Yeah. And now... Yeah, now the trick. And now... My extreme my top gel. My mm -hmm. Detailer 3 for my gel application. Yeah. A drop. On the paper palette. On my paper palette. Fill your brush. So you're doing the wet in wet with the uh, extreme mud, mm -hmm. as it were. Oh, and you're able to see it. I would think it would be very difficult to see. Yeah, it, it runs uh, to the sides more. Huh? Mm -hmm. So you can really see where you're going. Cool. And try to stay in the color. Yeah. Do not go... Uh, in between colors. Yeah. And why? Um, it's it's more cool. It's more uh, colorful then. Okay. If you go with the tip of your brush, yeah, really into and uh, moving to the background, yeah, you can see it later on. So like this. Okay, that already looks like a very happy design, a happy uh -huh. little nail. I can do happy and sweet as <laughs> well. <laughs> well, we saw that already with the butterfly wing, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and with the beautiful cartoon figure, the fantasy figure. Yeah. So how long do you think you need to cure this? Well, we can see the, the end result at 30 seconds, but one and a half minutes. And of course, always make sure that you shake your bottles of extreme mud mm -hmm. for the extra mud effect. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you have to shake all of your top gels in the bottle from time to time to make sure that the ingredients mix. And don't, um, uh, we'll take a full amount of mm -hmm. uh, to cover it. If you do um, really, um, well, how do you say it? Um, a thin layer? A very thin layer? <laughs> In Dutch. Coat? A thin Yeah, a coat? thin layer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then your mud isn't as mud as it oh. could be. Yeah. Okay. So. so let's see. Cool. Super cool. Really cool. I really love this. Yeah. So different colors. I love the blue-green combination yeah, as well. Yeah, me too. Oh, I love that as well. Yeah, me too. But I think, well, it's a sunny day today, so let's make a sunny design. And yeah. so fast. Yeah, super fast and so effective. Oh, I'm going to play around with this as well this Woo weekend. <laughs> Thank you for uh, showing all of your techniques and sharing your so knowledge welcome. with us. Yeah. And of course, thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, is next week another Nail Talk Live. And we're going, what, what will we do next week? Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I will sit there and do something, show something. And of course, to end everything, thank you for watching. Let's see the newest colors of Magnetic Nail Design jumping into spring. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>